So I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence and consent. It's good. Thank you very much. How's that? Much better. Yeah. This could be a really quite quite a broad topic. So I'm Rory Johnson. I work for a company called My Life Digital in the UK. My background is in artificial intelligence for bachelor's and master's, and then some machine learning for a tech startup, and some more advanced analytics for a consultancy, and then now data science for, for My Life Digital. So who are My Life Digital? Well, we're a company based out of the city of Bath in the UK, and we work at the intersection of GDPR and consent, and consent management platforms, and some other stuff that we do is analytics for charities and some bespoke sports performance analysis. So we work with citizen-centric models, and we really bring citizens at the center of what we do, and what I do is kind of informed insight, as long as I have informed consent. So to give you a rough idea, because I could, I could really go in any direction with artificial intelligence, really I'm talking about intelligent automated decision making. And this, this could be anything from data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing. What I'll go over is the impact of consent, key areas that GDPR is going to impact me immediately, and, and then run through some examples. What is data science for anyone that's, that's not familiar with, with what it is or what it does? We're, we're really looking at looking at our organization's data, data of users, transport, anything, and getting some insight out of this data, something we can use to produce a, a tangible benefit, really, or some insight or some knowledge that we can, we can take forward. So this could be predictive modeling, ranking models, recommendation systems, um, a lot of the AI projects that get quite a lot of press are self-driving cars and uh, anything in medicine. But, but really, it's about developing a good knowledge for the data and, and what I can use the data for. And as long as that's to do with people, that's going to that's gonna be about consent. And where consent comes in, really I have to kind of now immediately divide up the data that I'm working with. And actually yesterday someone said pretty much the same thing between user data and behavioral data. For me it's just anything that's personally identifiable and we know what this is, GDPR tells us kind of what this is. We know it's your name, age, gender, sex, something else. Anything that we can use to identify you as an individual. The other side of it is, is not BI data. And from the looks of it, I'll still be able to do most of the work I would otherwise do on, on non, non PII data. This might be anonymized, but even, even with what I do, a lot of the data is already not anonymized. But we know that we can work from anonymized data back to individuals, sometimes quite easily. So, so there's going to be a gray area there. What's actually going to be required for me in my day to day? Well, we have our purpose limitation. So if I'm looking at doing some research, building some models, and I want to predict how old you're going to be when you die, or something like that. I need to clearly define my purpose and, and communicate this. I have to do this at the start. And a lot of the time in the industry, we don't necessarily know where we're going to get the best value or where the best value for the user is going to be. So making this explicit up front is going to be quite a challenge. There's also data minimization, which is explicitly mentioned. But what's quite nice is in the work that I do, this is mentioned quite a lot. We, we already do a lot of data minimization. So we'll filter out the variables that we, we don't need because they don't contribute to the models that we're building. So actually, we have quite a nice quantitative start for us. This just gives you a quick overview of the life cycle of anything anything I could work on. This is a really high level. So we have our universe. This is us. And there's raw data. But we'll collect this. This could be via Twitter. It could be by you as a consumer, it could be, could be anything. Process this, clean this, make this suitable for any task. Make this into a really generic format that we can, we can build multiple products off of. 
And this is an exploratory piece. So even in industry, we're doing, we're going to do a lot of kind of research on your data to find out what, what we can do, what's going to be good, what's going to be useful. And we heard from yesterday that research in academia is typically pretty open, but we don't know how, how open it's going to be for industry to just continue to do research on your data. Then we'll build some models, build some algorithms, and either come up with a data-driven product or reports, visualizations to help a business improve, do something better, and find out it's doing something bad. So how, how is consent going to come into this? Well, we know that before we even start, we're going to have to get consent if it's personal data. So right at the start, consent. We also need our purpose and high-level description of what we're doing. So this is, this is also going to be quite tough. I might not necessarily know exactly what I want to do or the process that I'm going to apply to your data. I will know at the end of it, at the end of the research piece, but this is going to, this is going to be a really fuzzy area for me, definitely, to decide what, what methods can I use, what, what am I going to use. Would you consent to some methods but not other methods because you, you, know, you don't like neural networks because they sound quite, quite dodgy, but you do like the idea of something really simple like a decision, a decision tree. And then this data gets fed back into the world once we've built it. So yeah, if we're predicting something about you, we might feed that back into our system. We need more consent for that. So the key things for us, again, explicitly mentioned in GDPR, is profiling and automated decision making. Pretty much anything is going to be an automated decision. I want to build profiles. Profiles help me understand consumers, they help me understand behaviors, they help me learn from, from the data I have. And the types of profiles I want to build could be behavioral, how, how are people behaving, um, what, does, what does the interaction of all our users look like, how could we make our system better, could be some kind of preferential model, you're watching lots of stuff on Netflix, you want to know what you want to watch, maybe you'll consent to Netflix, but you won't consent to the government knowing how you behave. Health profiles are going to be pretty important. Uh, there's been a lot of talks about health, health so far, demographic risk profiles, and, and really anything that goes down in industry. This really builds a representative picture of you. And from this representative picture of you, we don't really need to know your personal information, but that might help, but we, we may end up working back. So some of my questions are, can I use your profile to, to build and train my algorithms? If I train an algorithm on your profile data, can I still apply that information back to you? So I might discriminate based on some information about you. And this isn't what society thinks of as discrimination. This is, I have a lot of numbers about you. And I might say, I'm going to charge you $1,000 for your phone insurance. Um, that's... Am I allowed to do that, or am I allowed to build my model on your data? Automated decision making, there are loads of questions for me around this. So I've just gone ahead and put up the key points from, from GDPR on the left. And questions for me are, do we need to explain the general purpose of the algorithm? Or do we need to explain kind of the specific reasons that we decided, actually, we're not going to insure you for, for health because of these reasons. They're, they're, we actually don't know, and so far the research has said actually it's going to be a very high level decision of this is how it comes to a decision, not this is why we made the decision for you. Practically, what kind of extra steps I'm going to put in, Justin spoke a bit about logs and auditing. There's going to be loads of extra work for that. Also, companies might not want to reveal why they're making decisions about you because trade secrets, this is pretty obvious in finance where they're making a lot of money out of their data. You might want to question that, but that they're not going to want to reveal any information about that. So we also have the, the situation where algorithms can make fairer decisions. We can remove discriminatory information from an algorithm much easier than <laughs> telling someone to forget about something when they're making a decision. And some of the conversations that have been brought up around that are maybe we could use algorithms to confirm or reject human decisions, which could be quite interesting. Or 
consent really is going to impact every aspect of this. So from the data I'm working with to the decisions I'm making to whether I'm going to apply this back to you. And there have already been some, some really good talks even this morning about group consent and some of the healthcare stuff about what, what types of stuff I'm going to be doing with your data. But really, for me in industry, consent's going to be at every stage. That was an interesting idea that I can get your data now. What if I build my models now and use them going forwards? Well, is that, is that okay? Can I stockpile information now and then get all my value now and then leverage that going forwards? Or is this going to be some kind of retroactive thing that I need to account for? I was going to touch a bit on some of the some of the use cases, but I don't know how I'm doing for time. A few minutes, zero minutes. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> so recommendation systems are super popular. You, you probably come across this stuff in Amazon, Netflix, um, even supermarkets. They're, they're all profiling you and producing some kind of recommendation, both with and without your personal information. Some of these services talk to each other already, and they'll match your information across services. They might not know your name, but they know who you are on the internet. And will I require consent to build these models by you or not? I don't know. And I've said a bit about anonymized processing of data. We can anonymize data, and some ways of anonymizing it are good, but you can, you can work backwards unless it's, unless it's encrypted, potentially. Insurance is another another big user. There have already been some conversations about can an insurer leverage information about your health to make an insurance decision? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you'll consent to that if they're going to give you a lower premium. But then this brings up the idea of, okay, you can give your consent for, for value. How, how far does that road go? Can I, can I leverage some kind of incentive for you to, to get consent or Give you a better, give you a better product. I may, that may be to the goal of making the best algorithm I can make. So there's a trade-off there between the more information I have about you, typically, the better the model's going to be. But if you're not going to give consent for certain information or if certain information's restricted, then quality of the models might be quite weak. And this is this is more important for. Healthcare, where we may be doing things like disease screening or predicting whether you're going to need a certain treatment at a given time or doing some kind of like genetic makeup profiling at a good time, um, you'll probably allow me to use your, use your health data for that. But it, it will impact the quality of the results. So you're probably going to consent to me building a model that gets. 99% accurate for cancer screening, but you know, some of that consent's removed. What happens if my model's now 90% accurate? These, are, these will be some of the trade-offs, really, depending on what data I have available. And that's pretty much it. So kind of some of the, some of the key impacts. Realistically, there's going to be a benefit both ways, because I'm not going to build something that's useless to individuals. So as long as I have consent, then I can, I can show you the value of, of what I'm doing. And there are a couple of resources that are doing a lot, of, a lot of work into particularly how AI as a field and the type of algorithms we'll build are impacted. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>